Okay, hi, this is Victor. As a senior chief, U.S. Navy retired, I'm very pleased to be able to post this video for viewing. The video in this presentation follows real people through Navy boot camp in Great Lakes, Illinois, as it is currently done. Please watch this video. Okay, now in this video, they're going to follow a couple of recruits briefly before they report to boot camp. Oh, wait, are you going first or <laughs> I'm going first? I'll go. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> you introduce yourself, I'll introduce myself. Uh, Alright. Hi, my name's Gabriel Cashett. I'm 18. I'm Simon Cashett, and I'm also 18. We're from Australia, but we were born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and, and we ship out our Navy boot camp. <sighs> <laughs> we get asked everywhere we go. Yes, we are twins. Uh, we're not identical, though. Paternal. Or is it paternal? Paternal. Ah, doesn't matter. I guess you've always got that best friend next to you. Yeah. I guess we've never really had that, so it's going to be different once we get assigned to a boat or if we're not in the same company in boot camp. So. My name, my country, my country's name. Um, I haven't been practicing as much as I should, that's for sure. I'm not gonna lie about that. All over the world. Around the world. Around You're the really world. butchering it here. It, it was a long waiting period, but then this past month has just gone by um, so quickly that yeah, it's unbelievable. They turn him back now. <laughs> yeah. All right. The doctor handwriting. Rachel Jones. Then what else did you say? You could put like a personal message, like a quick word of wisdom for everyone to read. What would I put? I mean... Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 24 years old. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm getting ready to ship off to Navy boot camp. So I studied French at George Mason. Uh, I was there for four and a half years. I took a year to study abroad in France. When we were in college, I would have never expected you to go to like the military. I really appreciate the group of friends that I have made. Um, I made them at Mason as well. I'm not going to cry. I'm proud. 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 Once I walked into the recruiting station that this is something that I, I really did want to do. Did you say, what is your first general order? Petty officer, my first general order is to take charge of this post and all government property in view, petty officer. Mm. <laughs> no, you um, okay. don't. I, I expect it to be challenging. I don't expect it to be difficult. Um, because thinking about how many people a year Challenge. go through boot camp, it yeah, cannot be that hard. So basic training is designed to actually train you, for, or break you down from who you are as an individual and lift you up as a team. You know, so you'll get that, you know, and it'll give you direction for the rest of your career. Yeah, I remember seeing my dad come pick me up from elementary school in his uniform, and I'm just like, yep, that's my dad, yep, he fights bad guys. So now that I'm getting to put on that uniform. Just to supplement what he just said, a person of, I'm going to supplement what he just said. For example, a person of one color, race, or creed learns to live with the other and to look out for the other. As sailors, they will work, eat, and live together. They're all on the same ship. You have to be able to depend on each other. Now, my youngest brother will be able to see me and think that I'm super cool. <laughs> I think it's really cool that I get to be one of the select few who does get this honor of being able to defend our country. So I feel very proud about that. It's an adventure. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Luis. I'm 19 years old. I was born in El Salvador. I uh, live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I'm about to leave for boot camp. Uh, my favorite part of Baton Rouge will be downtown. You know, me as a, being as a creative person, I, I love taking pictures of the places of this of the of the city. But from whenever I moved to Baton Rouge, I remember I, I hear laughs and I hear people talking about me and you know saying that he, he's the guy who doesn't know any English and it's stuff like that. And then. Uh, here I am now, I'm about to join the Navy and I'm really excited about it. So, right. It was so quick. I, I, like, it feels like it was yesterday that I called you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's Two weeks like before I got my citizenship, I called my recruiter off, my recruiter. And then like, I think two weeks after I got my citizenship, I got sworn in in the office. So you, it all, it was a perfect timing. Are you gonna be sad, happy? Happy. You gonna be happy when I'm gone. Why? Because <laughs> she's gonna be proud of you. And you gotta be proud. I did a lot of research. Well, not a lot, but I've done some research on um, what boot camp is like. Uh, I'm not really scared about it. I um, have a mindset. I think that if I go in there thinking that I'm the best, it's gonna higher my standards of what I can actually do. And I'm nervous. It didn't hit me back then, but now it's just starting as the time getting closer, you know, it's, it's getting there. They're proud. My parents are really proud about me joining the military. Um, of course, they are a little bit sad that I'm leaving, but they know it's for the best of me, so that that makes up for it. And uh, I'm going to miss you guys. We will miss you a lot. We'll miss you guys. A lot. You know, Sam, like the man, I feel so happy. And you happy? I'm I happy. So happy. Whenever we left El Salvador, my, my mom left all her family behind. Um, you and I she came here you do, to absolutely you nothing. Do the best. <laughs> she, she, it was, she did it all for me, and and I really consider my, my parents heroes for me. You know, doing that, the huge sacrifice of leaving the whole family behind, just to give me and my brothers a better life, is something I gotta take advantage of. You know, if I if I'm living in this beautiful country, I'm gonna take advantage of that, and I'm trying to do that the best way I can by joining the military. Love you. So we're gonna work all night, then we get breakfast, and then it's a whole day. Hurry up, let's go. Get on the bus. Let's go. Hurry up, go. Let's go. Get on the bus. Go. I'd like to commend you on your decision to serve this great nation and welcome you to the beginning of your journey in the United States Navy. Now, you are about to undertake a rigorous and intense training program that has prepared generations of sailors for service in the world's most powerful Navy. Whether you call it recruit training or boot camp, make no mistake about it. It's hard. It's designed to be hard because joining the Navy is so much more than just getting another job. When you get off the bus, you will walk with a purpose, like you mean to accomplish something tonight. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone going through boot camp learns to do exactly what they are told to do and when to do it. A sense of urgency is continually impressed upon them. The result is a group of professional sailors that can handle a variety of situations and easily perform as an individual in support of the team's success. No fast for you! Night of Arrival was just... Get off the bus and get in the building! Move! Move! No fast for you! Move! 
I'm like, what did I get myself into? So it was like one second we're on the bus, watching a little video, trying not to fall asleep. And then as soon as we get off the bus, like it's immediate screaming. Let's go! No! No! No back for you! Um, I remember getting yelled at. That's pretty much all I can remember is just getting yelled at. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Petty Officer Jamie Kalaw. I'm a recruit division commander. And the minute you get off the bus, there's gonna be a lot of stress applied upon you. The yelling, the go, 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 go. Can you do this? Can you get that done? Um, you know, and it's up to you to basically perform under pressure. Look straight! Look straight! Welcome to the United States Navy. For the next eight weeks, you will not do a single thing on your own. I tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Nothing that I ever tell you is a request, an option, or a suggestion. So you, we'll you, you, you make it, you give you a direction, and you have 0.5 seconds with. to pay attention to it, to the letter. So you, you can't mess up. If you mess up, then that's on you, and it's really going to fall back then on you. Then you will roll up your pant legs three inches up. When you are done, you will be on the tall line, standing straight, looking straight, awaiting further instruction. You have 15 seconds. Go! Go! Hurry up! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! I said, behind you! Behind you! Not next to you! You! Behind you! Is that touching your heels? No, it's not! Fix it! Pull Fix your thumb! Fix Pull it! Your thumb. Put your garbage away! Aye, aye, chief! That's how you sound off! Talk loud! He said get down to the last shirt with sleeves. Maybe I wasn't loud enough. Maybe you couldn't understand me. Fix yourself now. When I say go, you will make your initial phone call home. You will call someone that can confirm your existence. Somebody that knows that you came here to Navy boot camp. Let's go. I'm safe. Have your phone bar with this person. Let's go. Let's go. By the name... By the time people leave Navy boot camp, they will have demonstrated the ability to handle stress. If you cannot handle stress, you will not, we don't want you on a ship. I thought it was going to be uh, a little bit more relaxed, but it definitely isn't. A lot more intense than I did think it was going to be. Who said to stand like that? You must love getting special attention. Huh? There, Chief. The consequence at this point, the only consequence is of, of not being able to handle stress and not being able to do what you're told to do. The only consequence is, is your clothes are folded incorrectly. Nobody gets hurt. No equipment gets damaged. Get that attention! Now! I'm pretty sure that I said your hands will never be behind you. Your hands will never be in front of you. What is your problem? Proper military bearing will be maintained 24-7 and it starts tonight. Do you understand me? Yes, Chief. I can't hear you. Do you understand me? Yes, Chief. Yeah, that was the hardest for me, just to, like, not even argue the point, just take it, yeah. This road's gonna fall out, and then that road, let's go. Let's go fall out, two out faster, so let's go, get over here. We got our sea bag, which was the big green duffel bag that you have to carry. You take all of your personal items off, like all of your clothing, your shoes, everything you arrived in. You put it in a box, including your cell phone, and ship it home. And then you get brand new everything from t-shirts that we're wearing to the PT clothes to sneakers. Nothing that you came with aside from maybe a hairbrush and a few personal items gets to stay with you.
I knew that I would have to carry my own luggage. Like there was no bellman service here, but I didn't expect all of my things to be that heavy. Like when I was filling it up, I was like, okay, great. This is so convenient. Everything fits in this little green bag. Wonderful. And then I had to put it on and it wasn't so wonderful. Anymore. Okay, then fix it now. Uh, I've been up since three in the morning since last night. And I don't know how I am awake right now at this moment. And I've been on my feet and my feet are dying. So that's it. I'm exhausted. My arms feel like they're gonna fall off. And it's not fun yet. I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't even I sleep at night. Yeah, I nearly, I nearly yeah. fell asleep standing. So I am naturally standing out of tension right now. Not even trying to, but. <laughs> It's, it's definitely getting a lot tougher for recruits. Pretty sure I said you will sound off. Yes, Chief. Huh? Yes, Chief. Did I say walk back on the tow line? I didn't. Do you know where you're at? Respond! Say something! Yes, Chief. No, Chief. Maybe, Chief. What is it? Yes, Chief. Because responding is not an option. From what other people would say, and like how they said that they've kind of they've gone a bit softer because of um, like the era that we're in. But no, I think it's still kind of the same. There is a reason for everything that we do here. We do instill that pressure. So what is it doing next to you, huh? Let me guess. You want ah no no. Now you want to fix it. Maybe had you just done the right thing the first time, you wouldn't be in this situation. Because again, when when you do get to the fleet, we want to make sure that you, you you fight and you don't fold. It's nothing like boot camp. It's nothing like Navy boot camp. You are joining the United States Navy. I, I expected it to be hard. No, I'm not a star. No chief. I'm not a chief. No, 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 no. I told them all the time. This is more your Navy than it is mine. Years from now, I'm gonna retire, and you're gonna take over my spot. And I let them know that I wanna make sure I can tell my wife and kid that we're safe at night because there's tough people in the Navy, and I know for sure because I put them in. Where we're gonna be going down the speedway and cause the balls from the left. Means the left front is gonna take off first. Everybody will go down the speedway in a single foul line. So on, do you understand that? You're gonna have to get a little louder than that for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so come the files from the left. That's recruit, sound off. That's recruit, fall out. They might. There, once we receive them, we put them in divisions. So we assign them uh, to the divisions as we need them. And then around 0330 in the morning, once everybody goes through that entire process, then the in-processing barracks team picks them up and takes them to chow and from there, you know, later on that later on a few hours from there they'll meet the recruit. Hey, get up! Hey! Keep it. Keep it in there. Good job. Hey, get me out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Follow me up. Okay, just like in boot camp, a person of one race, creed or color will learn to live with the other and to look out for the other. As sailors they will Work, eat, and live together on the same ship. All prejudices contained should be gone after graduation. They are United States sailors. Two, two per bunk. Let's go, hurry up! Two per bunk! Yeah, I just want to get bouquet finished. Yeah. I like challenges, and I feel like this is a challenge, and I'm gonna beat it. I'm gonna, I'm going to graduate without doubt. It's going to happen. I have a very set goal of what I'm here to do. If I have to get yelled at, I'm getting yelled at, and that's fine. But in eight weeks, I plan on being out of here. So I don't have time to fight with anyone or to get in any type of trouble or get set back because that's not what I'm here for. Just in and out and move on. Just get out of here. Yeah, just get out of here. I want to graduate. Um, like I thought it just comes with going to boot camp that you were going to graduate, but you have to earn it. So. Yeah, it's definitely harder than I thought it was. Go, 
RDC. Pedro and Gonzalez will be your third RDC. Together, we have eight weeks to transform you and United States sailors. You are no longer a civilian. Whatever you were before is now over. You are about to begin a journey that's going to make you a part of the greatest naval force the world has ever known. Okay, notice at this point you have RDCs that are male and female. The recruits are taught by default to respect the rank and experience and knowledge, not the gender, as it should be. This training will not be easy. It wasn't meant to be. You will not be coddled nor disrespected, but you will be held to a high standard. Our job as your RDCs is to turn you into basically trained sailors. Your job as recruits is to do what you're taught and give us 100% motivation. You'll all be treated the same, no matter your sex, cultural background, religion, or sexual orientation. There are no individuals in the military. We are many, but we operate as one unit. For this team to be successful, you have to work together. If you fail, the team fails. Get on your feet. Get up. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Get up. My name is Pedro Susperi. I'm a recruit division commander at Recruit Training Command. All divisions start off basically the same. They're, they're very scared. They don't know what, what they're supposed to expect during their eight-week training. 51, 50, Turn your head! It's easy! Say your number! 51, 52, 52 53, Go! Pay attention! Stop! Stop! Pay attention to what's going on! Turn your head and say your number! 59, 60, 61, 61, 61 how's yours? 63. Pay Wait attention! Wait for the person in front of you to turn their freaking head! So you can say your number, and then you go after them. Do you understand? I'm Chief Petty Officer Stegall. I'm a recruit division commander here at Recruit Training Command Great Lakes. Processing days, that's where you're issued on your, your initial issue, Diddy issue. They have their basic medical indoctrination, but they get a series of shots. So during that week, you get a lot of shots. You get kind of everything you need to continue the rest of your training. The shots were were not fun. One, two, three. We got dental work done, which we just finished today. It was long, a long, long process. Everything that you do is with a purpose, and you do it to the best of your ability. We want to give them a shock, and we let them know that, you know, you haven't even started training yet. You haven't even begun to experience exactly what we're about to subject you to. And then you start teaching them the very basics, how to stand at attention, how to salute, how to do facing movements, left face, right face, about face. Learning how to fold things, learning how to do things correctly. I gave you 15 minutes to shave and brush your teeth. We are going on 25 minutes. This is unsat. Let's go! The first few days of boot camp, that's when recruits don't really know what to expect. So when you start yelling at them. You understand? You're here to get better, not to stand freaking lazy. You understand? Yes, Petty Officer. And don't stand like that. I shouldn't be repeating myself when I already trained. Some people really have a negative effect to that, and they don't like being talked to like that. And then some of them understand the process and understand that that's hey, us hey, being on them 100 percent all the time is what's going to make them a better sailor so in the end. You know, I don't. I, everything they do, I don't take it personal because I realize they are training me to be a sailor. It's a lot of tough love, um, and it's like I know that they us to succeed again. I know that they want us to do well. You know, they've all been through this themselves. Um, they have gone through a lot of training themselves to be RDCs. So trying to just remember that and give them that equal amount of respect um, really helps me get through it. They've been, they've been good. They're only really um, 
Again, if you're doing the right thing, they're not going to be yelling at you. 15, 45, 56, 57, 58, 59. Then why are you here? 62, you're 2 3 0. Get across and bring it all. 68, 69. We have to yell at them a lot and get them to understand that we need them not just to react to what we're saying, but to react fast. We're going to make it uncomfortable for them. We're going to make it so that they are able to, one, have confidence in themselves and their abilities, um, but also be able to deal with the stress. And so that's why we create a stressful environment. That's why we keep the temp up. What did your RDCs tell you about failure? If you fail, who fails? The whole team. Your initial PFA is tomorrow. You need to understand that if you fail, you will get set back. So tomorrow's gonna be a reality check for the recruits. It's gonna be their baseline uh, PFA where they're gonna be required to run a mile and a half, do a number amount of sit-ups and push-ups. Some won't make it, so someone's gonna go home. Ugh, I wanted to pass out and just die. <laughs> like, give me a gallon of water, let me drink it. So we were all really stressed about um, who was gonna pass and who wasn't gonna pass. Let's go, Jones. Let's go. Get up there. Come on. Don't think about it. Let's go. Come on. Five more. Five more. Give me five more. I happily that I didn't. I was able to pass it. I'm glad. So hopefully I can pass the next one with a better score. With the PFA, um, I knew I was ready. I was ready for it before coming to boot camp. But the day before, I got really, really sick. Still, I felt sick during the PFA, but I just pushed because I didn't want to get separated. And so that PFA baseline is just that. It's the baseline. It's not even the actual PFA standard. Right? And if they can't meet the baseline, then they probably need to go find something else to do. boot camp they can expect to be staying up late long hours working at a fast pace they're going to be expected to pass their swim qualification and expected to march as a unit and those are all things that we're training them from the beginning in p days they're going to have to bring it together week one and make sure they're performing all those tasks so in p days we we are loud and we are aggressive with them but we are instructors at first we teach it we're teaching them everything we take our time because come week one then it's not we don't have time to train every little thing over and over again they need to learn it so when we're telling them at first they need to pick stuff up and this is how it has to be done come week one we expect that to happen so when they start failing during week one then they're actually held accountable for their actions anything that you were before you came here you wait goodbye to that. That's gone. Because as long as people in this world want to take your life because of where you live, because of where you breathe, you must be ready. And if you're not ready, we don't need you. up every morning and I'm like, I'm really in Navy boot camp. Good morning. Uh, 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 quit stuttering. It says good doesn't morning. feel like we're here and it's like you go to sleep and you wake up and, and then you look around yeah, and you're, you're like, here. oh crap. You shaved that? Yes, Petty Officer. When? Last night, Petty Officer. Did you shave this morning? No, Petty Officer. Or within the last hour? No, Petty Officer. Go shave. All right, Petty Officer. Now we're in our permanent ship and it's a heightened amount of stress because there are so many more pairs of eyes looking at us. Um, it's stressful at the moment. 
I'm trying to get uh, used to it, I guess. I believe with Division 229 when we first switched from P days where we were coaching most of the time to week one where we were holding them accountable, it scared a few of them that they weren't going to be able to meet the standard that we expect them to hold. Everybody on your faces, now! You can't hurt the water. You ready to quit? You want to quit? I can get you out of here. All recruits, when you first pick them up from basically civilians and then get them into the week one training and you start using intensive training exercises on them, they really struggle. It's mostly a mindset. When someone's in your face yelling at you, they'll have a hard time doing 10, 15 push-ups and they kind of start to quit on themselves before they need to. You're quitting. You're not sweating. You're not putting any effort into it. You're just quitting. Yes, Get over here. What side of the open side of your pillow go to? The open side of the right side, officer. So why is your pillow backwards? Uh, Fix it! <laughs> it's the same hit every day. You both had that hit yesterday. Only one of you fixed it. Why didn't you look at it? I didn't see it, Petty Officer. Once he makes his rack, look at it for him. I it's called it. teamwork. Figure it out. I have it, officer. <laughs> See, now inspecting a recruit's rack or bed is an indication of whether they can do things the way they're supposed to be done. If they fail in boot camp, the only consequence is people do not get hurt, equipment does not get damaged. The only result is that they fail boot camp. That's been the most challenging part is just getting along with everyone and trying to work together and putting all differences aside and understanding that we have one goal to accomplish. So some people have adjusted to that better Four, than others. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, So that IT session was to show them after taps they're not allowed to argue with each other and they have to just handle things internally as a, as a division. One number! Then yell it! 12, 12, do it, do it, that's not yelling, yell 12, 12, 12, you know no one feels sorry for you, Calvin, no one, you want to be a part of this, you want to act like them, you're going to pay for it, just like they do. But they can't bring every situation to the RDCs, and also, they can't argue with each other like they're still in high school and need to realize that they're grown women and across the hall men and they need to handle it amongst one another. I don't want to hear one recruit knocking on my door telling me, see me recruit so and so did this. Handle it amongst yourselves like grown women. You understand? When you come to boot camp, it's not just about me as an individual, it's about us as a team. They're not sure who's going to step up and take leadership positions, who's going to help support those leaders. So it's just a forming stage at the very beginning of boot camp where they learn how to come together and work together. So 1400, head on spot, same time entry, forward hold on spot. You understand? I'm kind of learning leadership. There's a chain of command in our, in our division. I am a head, uh, I'm a head PO. Just I clean the head, I clean the bathrooms. I actually enjoy doing it. I actually like to keep it clean. And what I don't enjoy is people not listening to, <laughs> to what I tell. So and that's when being a team comes into part. Hey, please. Get the shower. So this is a baseline swim test to just make sure that they have the basic skills required to uh, survive if they were to find themselves in the ocean. So we walk in and I see the platform and I was like, okay, 10 feet is not that bad. And then you get up there and you look down and I'm like, woo, that's 10 feet. Oh, and he says, okay, step. And I kind of hesitated and before I knew it, I was over the edge. So once I finally got out of the pool and made my swim, I was like, okay, great. The worst part is over. And then we go to the other. Now, although there is a swim 
requirement. You have to know how to swim to a minimum level. Contrary to what a lot of civilians believe or think, sailors do not on a regular basis go have to go swimming during active duty time. We had to jump off again. And I was like, man, why didn't they tell us this before we do it? I would have reconsidered that. I'll correct myself. I'll add to that. Sailors are not required to go swimming weekly, daily or weekly basis during active duty. You are required to be able to to maintain a certain level of swimming, just like you have to pass a physical exam or, or, or jog with, with time limits. But that's it. But I passed. Um, but he did inform me that I needed to take swim lessons. It doesn't look as high as it is. And it's not the fact that um, you're like, I'm afraid of heights, but it's the feeling. Yeah, it's the feeling your stomach gets when you drop. You have to hold on to a inflatable boat, and everybody has to get in it one by one, and the water was really cold. But it was quick, it was fast, and uh, I really enjoyed jumping off the tower. Yeah, that was not for me. I did not enjoy that. Other people said that they loved it. I mean, I hope I don't go overboard. We started off with 79 recruits. And going through the first couple days, you lose a lot of recruits for medical reasons, for uh, testing reasons. And a lot of times those recruits get processed back into training. So they'll continue on with another division. It's very challenging. We push the recruits to their limit and beyond what they think their limit is because when they're here at boot camp, if we can push them and push them and make them feel uncomfortable but they keep succeeding and keep going through the mission, then those are going to be the sailors that are out there in the fleet ready to serve once they do graduate here. And if they find out that boot camp's not for them, it's better for us to filter out the people that are going to have an issue under pressure while they're here at boot camp before they get out there in the fleet and they need to perform. And that's the point when they decide they break. So boot camp's hard for that reason. Even though I've only been in um, boot camp for a week and some change, I can see things turning and I, I see goals that I can set for myself. It makes me a lot more sure of the decision that I made. I knew deep down inside, I really, really, really wanted to be in the service. So it made me a lot more sure and a lot more confident that this was the best decision that I could have made for myself. Whenever I was back at home, I used to judge myself a lot. I used to think, I'm not doing this right. What am I doing wrong in my life? And I don't have that feeling anymore. I always, I'm satisfied with what I'm going to. I'm, not, I'm really satisfied. Yesterday was our first day wearing the actual uniform. So when we got them and I see that my name is on my right, and it says U.S. Navy on the left. I'm just like, wow, Like I get to wear this uniform. This is so cool. It's, it's mind-blowing. And it's like, wow, my name is on here, and it says U.S. Navy. Like, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing it. It's happening. I'm so excited for graduation. I'm just, I'm ready for it. And I'm excited for my family to see me in my uniform and for me to just get out of here. I mean, that's, that's my number one inspiration to get through this, is seeing how my parents are gonna to react to it, how they're gonna feel, how they're gonna see what I change. It's making them proud. I can't wait for graduation for one reason, and, and, and I feel like it's, it's too long, it's so long away, but it's just knowing that I will make them proud. Okay, like I said, boot camp training provides new sailors with core skills required by all personnel on a ship. For example, in, in the event of fire or flooding or battle stations, all hands through the entire chain of command from top to bottom have their respective responsibilities. A person of one race, creed, or color learns to live with another and to look out for the other. As sailors, they will work, live, eat, and sleep together. 
Any prejudices contained within should be gone by now. After graduation, after graduation, they are United States sailors, and they learn they have learned skills to propel their success through their entire lives. Thank you for watching.